All right, go and take your homework out if you would, please. You had these four problems to work. You also had page 55, numbers 37 through 40 to complete. So go ahead and have your books open to page 55. We'll be there in just a moment, but I want to start by looking at these three problems. We were dividing radicals, and we said that like multiplication, in order to divide radicals, you have to have the same what, Brandon? In order to divide radicals, you must have the same... Audrey, help them. Index. Have to have the same index. The radicals must be of the same order in order to divide. And um, on the first one, that's not a problem at all. So we, we divide, right? But I said sometimes you can't divide. For instance, Kendall, you can't divide 3 by 9. So we said if you can't divide, treat it like a fraction and simply reduce it down. So here, 3 ninths would reduce to 1 third. We don't have to do that with the radical portion, though. Square to 24 divided by square to 6 plus gives us the square root of... Four. We can just divide that easily. And then we want to try to reduce, or in this case, not reduce, actually take the radical. What is, or take the root. What is the square root of four class? Two. So we have a third times two. Let's not make this too hard. What is one third times two class? Two thirds. How many had two thirds as your answer to the first problem? Questions on this first one? All right, for the next one. Coefficients divide easily. 15 divided by 5 just gives us class? 3. But you can't divide 2 by 8, so I'm going to treat this as 2 eighths. I'm going to reduce that fraction down to get what, Maddie? 1 fourth. And now we have to take care of that root of the denominator thing. I've got to take the square root of the 4. Can I take the square root of 4, class? Yes. Yeah. What's the square root of 4? Two. 2. So I'm going to write this as a 3 over 1. Of course, the square root of 4 is just 2. And then can I take the square root of the 1? Yes. Yeah. If I couldn't, so be it. But I can, and the square root of 1 is just 1. one. So I have 3 over 1 times 1 over 2 gives me? 3 halves. 3 two. halves. 3 twos. 3 halves. Um, so how many got 3 halves for the second one? Questions on the second one. Look at the next one. Here we run into a problem. Because, Brandon, we have to have the same... Index in order to divide, and I ain't got that. Um, what is my index up here? I don't see it, which means it's an understood 2. So I've got a square root, I have a fourth root. What's the common index we want to shoot for here? I could. I'd rather go with the 4, right? So for now, I'm going to leave the 4. I'm going to leave the 2. I know those are going to divide and get a 2 in a minute, but I want to keep things intact here. I'm going to even keep the fourth root of the 6. That's terrible aim with the arrow. But here I'm going to change this. I'm going to multiply the index class by to get a fourth root. And if you multiply the index by 2, you also have to square or raise to the second power within to get the square root class or the fourth root class of 4. four. Now I can divide here to get 2. two. And here I'm going to reduce 4 sixths to get the fourth root of 2 thirds. But I can't leave my answer this way. I've got to try to take the root of the denominator. I can't take the fourth root of three. In fact, there's not a whole lot of radical or rational fourth roots I know. I'm going to have to get the fourth root of? 243. I can do better than that. That's a fifth root. 81. 81. If I were to multiply top and bottom by a 27, I could get four, or excuse me, two over one times the fourth root of 54. 81st. And now I can take the square of the 80, or the fourth root of the 81 class to get 3. I'm going to leave the 2 in the numerator, and I'm going to leave the fourth root of the 54 in the numerator as well. How many got all the way to the final answer? 2 times the fourth root of 54, all over 3. How many at least got this far? 2 times the fourth root of 2 thirds? How many forgot to change to the same index? You end up with like a 1 third here. All right, questions on this problem. Does it make sense now? Remembering we have a test coming up in less than 36, which is in just three more days. Question. All right, looking at the last one here, once again, <clears throat> I got a square root, I got a cube root, they don't have the same index, so I'm going to have to get what matching roots here? Um, Michael? Uh, six. Sixth root. So I'm going to change this to two times the sixth root of something divided by the sixth root of something else. Here, class, we need to multiply the index by? So what do I do to the radicand class? Cube it to get? Here, I've got to multiply by? So what do I do to the index, or the radicand class? Square it to get? 
I can reduce the 2736. Of course, 2 is still just going to be a 2 over 1. Um, and uh, what is 2736 reduced to, anyone? You can reduce down to get 3 fourths. But remember, I want a sixth root, a rational sixth root down here. We don't actually have any of those that we memorized. Well, let's do this. One of the sixth is one. Therefore, the sixth root of one is one. Well, that's no help, right? So two to the sixth is maybe on the calculator. 64. 64. And so therefore, the sixth root of 64 is two. Now, that only helps if 4 can become a 64. If not, then we go to 3 to the 6th, then 4 to the 6th, and so forth. Can 4 turn into a 64? Yes. Yes. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by um, 16 here, and that's going to give me 2 over 1 times the 6th root of 48 64 Now, again, I can't do anything about the 6th root of the 48, but I can take the 6th root of the 64 class, 2, and conveniently... Cancel the twos. And so my answer is just the six through the 48. How many got the six through the 48 is your answer? How many left two, six through the 48 over two? Just forgot to cancel the twos. How many forgot to get some index? How many left it here and gave up? Cowards. All right, questions on this. Questions on this. Do you feel like we understand dividing radicals just a little bit better having tried these problems and now seen them worked? All right, folks, open at page 55. They should already be there. Let's go ahead and take a look at numbers 37 to 44. Again, a lot more of that second method of radical reduction we have to do here, right, with the roots of denominators because of the existence of the fractions formed by the division. Let's take a look at number 37 here. And um, we've got the fifth root of 11a to the fourth divided by the fifth root of 11a cubed. And that just divides straight up, right? We don't even have to make some weird fraction nonsense. What do we get for our answer, Maddie? Yeah, the fifth root of 11a. And uh, that's it. We'll just leave it. How many got that answer for 37? Good. Number 38. Once again, you just divide it straight up. What do you get when you divide the cube root of 12x squared y by the cube root of xy? Uh, Genesis? Well, the 12 divided by 1 is 12, right? x squared divided by x is x. I've got a y and another y that should have... Cancel. So it should have just been the cube root of 12x. How many have that for 38? The cube root of 12x. All right, number 39 also divides just straight up. Uh, really nice and easy. What do we get for that answer, Kendall? Um, the sixth root, uh, three squared, three Good. The sixth root of 3r squared y to the fourth. And I'll say this. A lot of students, especially the smart ones, like, wait, wait, wait. 6, 2, and 4. I can pull a 2 out. What's the problem with that? The 3 has a 1. And it's not like you can write it as something squared. So it's really tempting. Now, some of you are like, I never would have thought of that. In this case, that's good for you, actually. But yeah, don't, don't fall into that trap on something like this. Make sure the number also has the next one that you could cancel with if you want to try that. Um, number 40. We're dealing with fourth roots. Again, they were nice enough to give us the same index. Initially, we're not going to be able to divide 18 and 16, so we're going to have to reduce it down, class, to get nine eighths. Nine eighths. Uh, but the letters divide okay to where we just get what in the denominator, class? B to the seventh. So your initial answer, I have more radical line than I need there, uh, is the fourth root of nine over eight B to the seventh. How many got this initially here when you just straight up divide? Now then, I've got to be able to take the fourth root of the denominator. And I can't take the fourth root of 8, but I could take the fourth root of? Uh, I can't take the fourth root of 64. Cube root, yes. 16, right? And I can't take the fourth root of b to the 7th, but I could take the fourth root of b to the 8th. If I multiply top and bottom class by or not to. All right, so then my numerator becomes an 18b. We'll leave the fourth root of the 18b. We don't care about it. The fourth root of 16b to the eighth class is? Four. Oh, careful. Two. 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 Two b squared. Two b squared. And there's our answer there. How many got this answer? Fourth root of 18b over two b squared. Just a couple of you, all right? How many, uh, how many left it like this? It didn't reduce the radical at the end, all right? Questions? Questions. Do we feel like we understand radical reduction a little bit better now? 
maybe a little, not quite sure what we were doing as of Friday, but now that we've tried it, now that we've seen it, like, okay, I get it now. How many feel more comfortable? How many still moderately terrified? All right, let's do some class work and see if we can unterrify you just a little bit. <clears throat> just try it again. Yeah, erase your malfunction. All right, we're going to start them with adding radicals. And to add radicals class, they must be similar, which means they have the hand. Same index, same radicand. Which means to get them similar, we're going to have to reduce when? At the beginning. At the beginning, good, Michael. Whereas with multiplication division, we reduce class at the end. And we only have to do one reduction. With the addition and subtraction, you have to do more than one reduction. I'm going to start with a couple multiplications and the addition, then we'll go back to some division practice. about another minute or so to be finishing up.
time. Save time. Pencils down even if you're not finished. Brandon, let's take a look at this problem here. What do I need to do first? What did you do first? I did I just wrote straight as well. So okay. Um, a, B, P, B, simply to 16 times. Okay, factor to 16 times 5. We'll take the square root of the... Four. I mean, six, seven, eight, to get. Four. And we'll leave the... There we go, times the square root of 5. All right, next, what might we do? Uh, Abby? Um, you can um, take the 15 and the square root of 1 fifth and multiply 1 fifth by 5 over 5 to get negative 15 times the square root of 5 over the square root of 25, which simplifies to 5. Okay, so this ends up becoming yeah. the square root of 5 over a 5. And then reduce 15 and 5 to get 3. So it's in the 5 to 1. So the answer is negative 3 times square root of 5. All right, so I've reduced the first one down by factoring. Reduce the second one down by making the making the denominator rational, right, and take that root. Uh, continuing across um, Genesis, what do I do with the next one? Right, these are all square roots. That's a fourth root. Uh, 20 squared. Right, rewrite the radicand here as a 20 squared so that to get Right, so this basically just becomes 3 times the square root of 20. Now that doesn't match these, though. Does that mean I'll just combine these and we'll just leave that one? Sometimes that's what it means, right? Why doesn't it mean that here? What can still happen with the 20? Right, I've, I've done method number three. I've got the index smaller, but I can still go back and do method one of factoring it up. You said into what? Four and five. Four and five, where I'll take the square root of the, uh, to get a, and that gets multiplied by the three I already had to get. And now I can add four squared to five minus three squared to five plus six squared to five class to get what answer? Seven times the square root of five. How many have that final answer on the first classwork problem? Questions on this first one? Let's go to the next one here. Kendall, we've got to multiply these two binomials. How might I do that? Well, they don't have to have the same radicand to multiply. They have to have the same index, and they do. They're all square roots everywhere. So we're happy with that. They're binomials, though. How do I generally multiply binomials? Um, foil. Foil. And so we'll do the same thing here, except I'll uh, show a little bit more work when I'm working with radicals, because more places I could screw up. So uh, when we multiply the first, for instance. Um, five times square root of, of course, we know the square root of 36 is just. So really, my first becomes 30. 30. All right, then uh, continuing, Maddie. Ooh, careful. I multiply by the outer. Negative times positive is negative. 5 times 1. And then square root of 6 times square root of... Oh, you said you divided. Careful, we're multiplying. Right, foil, multiplying. So we should have multiplied square root of 6 times square root of 3 to get square root of 18. There we go. Does that make sense? All right, so for redemption here, Maddie, when we multiply the inners, what do we get? There we go. And then we multiply the last together here, Michael. And you get 6. Well, that eventually, well, negative 6, right? Eventually, we start with a negative 2 times the square root of 9. But we know that's 3, and that gives us negative 6. Would it be a problem to do that on your head? Probably not. Um, but we're not done yet, Audrey, because there's some stuff we can do to further simplify. Um, you can combine 36 to get 24. And then negative 3 times the square root of 18. But still minus a point. You're not done. Um, that's 9 times 2, so you can get 9. 7 times 9 times 3. Good. We take a 3 out of this 9 to get 24 minus now a 9 times the square root of now a 2. How many went all the way to the end? 24 minus 9 squared of 2. How many stopped at 24 minus 3 squared of 18? All right, so again, just look for that opportunity to reduce. Kind of like here with the 20. We did one reducing. There's still more. We've done the multiplication. There's still just a little bit more there. Uh, what about this last one here? Let's go back to Kendall. 2 times the 4 through to 5 times 3 times the cube root of 2. Thoughts? Um, yeah, I've got the same right, so... Um, 12. Okay, so we want 12. 
roots. So 2 times the 12th root of something times 3 times the 12th root of something. Stands to reason we're going to have some really big numbers going on here. That's okay. Probably it's not going to reduce at the end anyway. Um, Genesis, what do we do next? How do we figure these missing numbers? So therefore, to get good, not 15, 125, but I'm multiplying that by 3, we're cubing it good, and so here, so good, 2 to the 4th becomes a 16, and then we use our calculator presumably to multiply, Abby, back to you to get uh, 6 times the 12th root of 2,000. And again, maybe you could reduce this more. On your calculators, try 2 to the 12th. Remember that Y to the X button? Because uh, 1 to the 12th, I know it doesn't help anyway. So the only other whole thing is a 2 to the 12th. What is 2 to the 12th? 4,096. Yeah, that's already bigger than this. We're done. We don't reduce it all. And 2,000 is not like a cube or a square or anything special like that either. So we're done with this. And then we'll go 3 for 3. And then we'll go 3 for 3. 2 out of 3. Questions on any of these? Yes, ma'am. First one, mm -hmm. I did for I for eighty. I did twenty and four. Ah, okay. This is interesting. So if you did four times twenty, you would have had two times the square root of twenty. Here, if you multiplied by twenty, this would give you a one hundred, right? Which you could take the square root of. So you end up with the square root of twenty over a hundred, which would be fifteen over one times the square root of twenty over 10, which you could reduce a little bit here and get like 2 and 3. So 3 halves squared to 20. And then here you could have gotten a 3 times the square root of 20. So you see we could have gotten similar radicals with the 20s. We would have gotten, let's see, 5 minus 3 halves would be uh, 7 halves times the square root of 20. Would have been our initial answer. And then we could have tried to do the 4 times 5. Pull out a 2, and the 5 and the 2s would cancel. We get 7 squared of 5 still. But yeah, I mean, you could have gone with the 20, technically. It would have been A. They would have been similar radicals. That's all it has to be, right? Same index, same rad radicand. Just for the final answer, it would have to be reduced. But yeah, that would technically work. And good. Any other questions, comments? All right, let's go back to some division now and make sure we're good to go there again. Talked about it Friday. Didn't get a chance to practice it much. Tried it in the homework. Eh, some success. Let's see if uh, we've got it now or if we need a little bit more work. I'll get to that in just a second. 16 times the square root of 10m cubed over 2 times the square root of 2m to the 4th.
for sake of time, let's go and take a look at his pencils down. And um, Brandon, on this first problem here, we start by just dividing the coefficients to get eight. And when we try to divide the radicands, it almost works out, but really we end up reducing this fraction to get Ten m cubed divided over two m to the fourth. If this were a fraction, you'd cancel the ten and two to get five. You cancel the m cubed and n to the fourth to get m in the denominator, right? So again, leaving the red out of can the same or the, the index the same. Excuse me. We end up with eight times the square root of five over m. Or I had said maybe making this an eight over one, right? Uh, times the square root of, and it says five over m, but we know we have to take the root of that denominator. So Audrey, I need to make this m become an by multiplying top and bottom by m. So we end up with actually a 5m over m squared. At this point, I'll leave the 8, I'll leave the 1, I'll even leave the square root of 5m, but class, I'll take the square root of the m squared to get 2. So I end up with 8 times the square root of 5m all over, and we just end up with an m in the bottom, which obviously does not cancel with the 8. And there's our answer. How many had this answer? 8 times the square root of 5m over m questions on the first one. Then we'll leave it as 8 times the square root of 5 over m. All right, so you see just multiply by the m and m in the top and bottom to get that square root. Looking at the next one, Michael, um, the coefficient is really easy to divide. 6 divided by 1. 6. 6. And again, I can't divide, so I'm going to reduce the fraction, get the square root of 2 thirds. Two thirds but I'm going to need to multiply top and bottom both by 3. 3. So that instead of 2 thirds, I end up getting the fraction Six ninths. Six ninths. And at the same time, let me go and put the six over one. Um, I'm going to leave the six. I'm going to leave the one. I'm even going to leave the square root of six. But class, we'll take the square root of nine to get three. But this time, although the m and the eight don't cancel, the six and three do. My final answer, Michael. Two times the square root of six. How many ended up with two times the square root of six for the middle one? I have questions on that second problem. All right, and then on the last one, uh oh, Maddie, I don't have. Yeah, what do I got to do? So also within the radicals, within the radicands rather. Oh, I don't multiply by two. I multiply the exponent by two, or essentially square. And here I would cube. So my problem's going to change. Instead of four cubed to twelve, it becomes. Okay, so let's go ahead and divide the four eighths, or rather reduce the four eighths to get one half. And then here it becomes the. And here. Eight. There we go. And then can I divide a 144 by eight? Anyone? Yeah, it comes out evenly, doesn't it? To get. So then we end up getting one half times the sixth root of 18. You could also put that sixth root of 18 over the two, move it to the numerator. Either answer is acceptable though. And you can't do anything with the six or an 18, so we're done. How many got that answer on the last one? Questions on that last one? Is there one, are there one of these problems you say, can we do another one like that? Either the first, the second, or the third, where maybe the indexes don't match, maybe there's this fraction, you have a couple where there's fractions left over. Questions on any of these you say, can we do another one like that? Because I'm still not, I think I'm there, but I don't, I just want to make sure. Any questions? How many say, I think I got it now? Any questions? Going one some questions. Going twice some questions. Clear your desk, except for a clean sheet of paper and a pencil. Clean sheet of paper and a pencil. And a calculator. Keep forgetting, y'all are allowed to use calculator. Clean sheet of paper, pencil, and calculator. Everything else away. First and last name at the top of your paper, along with today's date. First and last name at the top of your paper, along with today's date, which is 92721. 92721. And this is quiz nine. Quiz nine. There's a desk there. Brandon's fault, he put it. The closest one to you, the logical person to blame. That's why he put me here. Mm -hmm. uh, 
All right, let's take a look at the quiz together very quickly, and then we'll let you get started. Uh, numbers one through three, add or subtract, do what it says. Numbers four through six, multiply. Numbers seven through nine, divide. Pretty straightforward. All right, use the quiz copy as a cover sheet. You may get started.
So you are using your cover sheet. Just a few more minutes to be finishing. up.
20 seconds to spare. Go and take your notes out if you would, please. Suppose if you're watching on YouTube, you can pause for just a moment while you finish. Now let's have one last thing we want to talk about here real quick. We only got about five minutes left, but it won't take even that long to go over this because we've kind of already been doing this. That's this concept of rationalizing the denominator. Rationalizing. Big fancy word means to make rational. Or more practically speaking, to take the root of the denominator. And you're like, I thought we already did that. Yeah, we did. This is kind of the same song, second verse. One subtle difference I want to point out here, but really this is nothing different from what we've been doing earlier. We look at this and we say the numerator is a 2. That's rational. Woo! I don't care. It's a numerator. The denominator is the square root of 3. Oh, that's a problem because that's irrational. You have to take the root. But I can't take the square root of 3 class, but I can take the square root of 9. Now here's the key. To make this a square root of 9, I've said before, we'll multiply top and bottom by 3, right? That's because both numbers were under the radical. This isn't under a radical. Technically, I'm not multiplying the square root of 3 times the 3, because that would be 3 square root of 3. What do I multiply the square root of 3 by to get the square root of 9 class? By the square root of 3. And again, it didn't matter before because it was one big radical sign. So the only thing I want to point out here is technically you're multiplying by the square root of 3, and if you multiply by the square root of 3 in the bottom, square root of 3 in the top. Once you do the bottom, you've got to do the top to get 2 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 9, which of course gives me 2 times the square root of 3 over 3. I'd make sure you have that copy down. Let's take a look at the next one. What over the cube root of a squared b? Well, I can't take the cube root of a squared over b. I can take the cube root of, not a squared, but maybe a cubed, right? And I could take the cube root of b cubed. But to get the cube root of a cubed and b cubed, I'd have to multiply by, good, not a b squared, but Brandon said the cube root of a b squared. Again, it's the only real difference is we have to remember the radical with it because we don't necessarily have a radical in the numerator. So we multiply the numerator by the cube root of a b squared and 1 times the cube root of a b squared class? Cube root of a b squared. And in the denominator, here's the cube root of a cubed b cubed, which is just a b. So we'll get the cube root of a b squared over a b. Make sense? The only thing that's going to make it a little tricky is if you do actually have a radical in the numerator, it could make things a little dicey. For instance, here we see the cube root of a 4. I can't take the cube root of 4, but I can take the cube root of 8 if I multiply top and bottom by, not by 2, cube root of 2. And that presents a problem in the numerator, doesn't it? It doesn't in the bottom. The cube root of 8 is great, right? And of course, that's just going to give me a denominator of 2. But in the numerator, I have a square root of 5 times a cube root of 2. I'm going to have to turn them both class into 6 root. So it's going to be the 6th root of um, 8. times 3 and cube it, 125. And then here times the 6th root of 4 times 2, so square it, which gives me the 6th root of... 500 all over a 2. Does that make sense, though? Again, you make it so you can take the root of the denominator. If it don't work, make it work. I don't care what the numerator ends up looking like, as long as the denominator does not have a radical. How about this? The, uh, the square root of x minus y. Well, realize this is all one quantity. You could group it in parentheses if you wanted to, right? But I can't take the square root of x minus y. But maybe I could take the square root of x minus y squared. How would I get the square root of x minus y squared? Multiply the square root of x minus y. Um, by the square root of x minus y, right? Multiply top and bottom by the square root of x minus y. Because the square root of x minus y times the square root of x minus y gives me the square root of x minus y squared. And of course, 1 times the square root of x minus y. And I can't do a thing with the square root of x minus y in the top, but I don't care, it's a numerator. In the denominator, I can take the square root of x minus y squared class to just get x minus, y. x minus y. Do you see, it's really no different from what we were doing before, except you've got to remember the radical signs as you multiply top and bottom. Does that make sense? 
So really not a new concept, just kind of a twist on an old concept. Your homework is in the description of the video. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, for those in the class, of course, I will give you the handout. We're going to practice with eight radicals. I need you to rationalize. So just eight homework problems, rationalizing these denominators. We'll take a look at this tomorrow as we wrap up tomorrow, our final uh, concept for the test. And then Wednesday, we'll be reviewing. Thursday will be your test. As we look ahead toward closing out this section on radicals and, of course, the section on fractions that preceded. So those two concepts on Thursday's test, fractions and radicals. Frankly, admittedly, two of the most annoying concepts to figure all on one test. Okay, so it is going to be a little bit of a more challenging test. Get rest this week. Be ready to think clearly. But that test coming up Thursday. Have a wonderful rest of your day. You are dismissed.